Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm Pete Mazzetti. My guest this evening is Chuck Lewis, who is the executive director of Valley Shore Community Television. Hi, Peter. Hello, my friend. How are you? Hello, how are you? I'm great. How are you? What's Good. new? Uh, uh, oh, there's a lot. Oh, there's a lot new. I haven't lot. seen you in a while. How are you doing? I'm great. How, I'm what great. number show is this for you? Uh, let's see. We surpassed 500, so we're probably in the middle of the mid 500s. Okay. So you're probably our most active um, in-house producer as far as pr production of uh, talk shows here at I the hope. studio. That's awesome. I hope. Congratulations on, thank uh, you. On, uh, on that long run of well over 500 shows. And, uh, well, thank you've you for hosting a, me. You've brought a lot of guests through our, through our doorways here at the studio, and Absolutely. we're very proud of you and all the work that you do. A um, lot of changes here at the studio. I know. Um, we have some wonderful new... Uh, ladies running the studio for us. Um, let me tell you a little bit about them. Okay. Uh, and hopefully maybe they'll even edit in a little profile shot of the two of them working because they're both behind the scenes right now directing this shoot. Right. Um, joining us, uh, one of our field producers who um, took over for the cable access position that Chris Morgan held. That's right. Um, Miss Emily Miner. Um, so she's got, she comes with a great experience. Um, and has done a wonderful job um, through training. Chris ha handed the baton off to her. They trained together for about a month before he left, and um, she's done a wonderful job in assisting her uh, as the studio, um, I guess, IE production, you know, coordinator, manager, plus she's a, one of our most incredible film, uh, field producers doing wonderful digital storytelling on the field is one of my former students from my HK days, Miss Anne-Marie Lepard, um, who joins us. Um, award-winning producer, I should tell you, that when she was with me at HK, she was winning, she won a, doc, um, a, a national award from the Student Television Network for Best Documentary Produced in All of America. Really? And so when she graduated just recently from Hofstra University, we were excited to, um, to offer her a position. So she's working just short of full-time. Emily's our full-time position, but I think between the two of them, they collaborate wonderfully together. Um, one of the things I've been most impressed by the two of them is that um, they are a congenial, both of them have congenial personalities and, and uh, watching them work with the, the clients that we've built over the years and the, the tremendous amount of outreach that they're doing. Um, they're knocking on every selectman's doors in the nine towns that we mm -hmm. serve, inviting them to uh, come on on a monthly basis and tell their story. Um, just one of many things going on and producing a lot of humanistic stories in the community um, and just you know, really turning over the leaves just before uh, this morning has been a long day, as you know, and we right. hosted the um, Westbrook Chamber of Commerce here this morning, and um, the two of them did a wonderful job hosting that, that breakfast meeting here, and, um, you know, a great opportunity to network um, with business leaders in the community. Um, just so many great things going on, and they, the thing that they bring to the table that I remember one of the things I used to look for in my students is passion. Yeah. They both, I overheard one of them saying this morning, I'm not going to throw Emily under the bus, um, <laughs> that she really loves coming to work every day. She's, uh, she loves her job. And that's the kind of thing that any employer wants to hear, that you know, they, they bring a tremendous passion to their job, and, they, and it, it's evident in the work that they're doing. So, Absolutely. Um, so we're really happy about that. Um, we've just become the benefactor of a, uh, about a $115,000 grant that I was able to write. And um, so we're continually updating and, and improving the equipment and updating the equipment uh, to stay state of the art in this facility. Right. Some of the new unique things that we have coming in from this new grant is, um, you know, we are a broadcast facility, but we're officially going to have a high end cinematic broadcast camera. Um, we're also looking at purchasing a drone. We're also looking at um, upgrading our graphic system to a really high-end graphic system so that when you see the lower thirds or the yep. titles and graphics that you see on our program, um, we, we've just put out to bid a, a, a new graphic system. that'll. So one of many things that we're doing, uh, we're very fortunate. The grant was um, a state of Connecticut grant called Pegpedia. Um, it basically um, offered to cable access stations like ourselves around the state to keep our our um, facilities up to date with all the coolest technology going on. Cool, very nice. Yeah. By the way, before I forget, I yeah. just want to also echo what you said about the wonderful people that are mm -hmm. behind the scenes here, Emily and Andrew. Yeah. They're both very yeah. wonderful. They're 
always very welcoming and very friendly yes. to me when I come in and yeah. tape. And that's I, good to hear. That's good to hear. I a or a concern. I think that one of, they would make the next best guest instead of me on your show in the future. You know, oh boy. Invite, invite, invite them to be a guest on the show. Yeah, but that means who's going to sit back there and hit, hit the buttons? Uh, I can do it. We'll I, have, have, <laughs> I, know enough, I know enough how to hit a few buttons back there. So I was going to tell you, what, we'll have you and Mr. Kane come in and hit the, there you the go. buttons. There you go. Yeah, so one of the important things that, that's going on in, the, in this industry, as you know, is people are cutting the cord. Right. So we're concerned about, as people cut the cord, our subscriber income or the income that keeps the doors open is dropping in, the, in this facility. Correct. So um, we're in a, a constant, um, well, we're going through a phase right now with Pura, um, an investigative uh, phase that actually Governor Lamont um, instituted uh, and studying the operations, the cable operations in the state, the cable um, access operations in the state. Um, so, you know, call it an audit, call it a study, um, but they've turned over all the leaves of all the operations in the state to look at, um, you know, whether, uh, whether the, you know, there's any ways we can consolidate things or improve, improve the, um, um, the system so that there's more funding available to, going to the future. So we're looking at a, a, a new funding mechanism because okay. we can't rely on su cable subscriber income anymore because no. that's, that's, that's shrinking. And so there's a couple of different options but, you know, being put on the table. But this isn't just a Connecticut issue. This is a, a national issue right. um, because cable, you know, there's going to be the day that we're going to wake up and cable companies won't be selling cable anymore. Right. Um, they, they recognize that you know, streaming's the way to go. Um, we've watched our cable subscribers drop roughly um, in the last three years, almost by 4,000 subscribers. Um, we're, we're, we have 4,000 less viewers out there basically watching the show. Wow. So what we've done here at the studio is um, we've recognized that happening and what we've done is we've become a really digital state of the art operation here. Right. Um, you can watch our signal right now on Apple TV, Roku, um, just to mention a few, so we're digital, and the, the biggest thing, the biggest, best area to find us right now is on every one of the towns that we serve, we serve nine towns, we can be found on their uh, home web page. Okay. So one of the cool things is that if you pull down, you have an option of watching our live 24-7 content, mm -hmm. or more importantly, the, we're finding the most powerful tool that we offer is that we basically built video vaults. Right. for each of the towns. So for instance, if you're in the town of Clinton, we do a lot of their town meetings. Yes, you do. Um, and you're not able to watch that town meeting live, um, Emily and Anne Marie will upload that to their town of Clinton video vault. So you go to their home webpage, you can drop down and then find the meeting that you missed and you can watch it at, on, the time, on your time schedule right. and when you want to. So we call that video on demand or VOD. Yes. And um, that's one of the greatest gifts that we're, we're giving to the town. So we do so much more than just broadcast out a signal. Um, one of the other big areas that we're making a large push right now is um, we have a number of interns working for us this summer that right. I shouldn't say working, but are volunteering for us. They're going to train with the ladies and they're going to go out in the community and produce stories of interest. Um, you know, local news is a disappearing thing, right. and we recognize that. And so that's one of the things. There's a lot of good and unique stuff going on in our communities. And uh, community access, that's where, that's where we're still very viable, is that we are the, one of the last local voices left in our community. For instance, your show. Mm -hmm. All the wonderful guests that you have on your show who have a local impact in our communities, their message would never get out without cable access. Exactly. Um, so it's extremely important, just that, you know, even though the subscriber Subscribers are dropping on the cable side. They're rising on the digital side because we have that digital presence. We've moved with the times as far as um, technology-wise, but what hasn't moved with the times is the, the funding mechanism that keeps cable access alive. So, you know, one of the, one of the things I applaud the young ladies for is that the, the way they're working with the, the local officials right. and, and, and proving and, and validating why we are so important to our local communities, because that's important. We need them as an ally in order to get our messages out to, to the community. Absolutely, and like you said, you can yep. watch on TV, you can watch online, you can watch on VOD. Yep, yep, and that's a really important factor of what, what we do. So your show, for instance, can be found on Video On Demand. Right. Not only you know, are people watching it live here, but if they go to the VS, VSETV.com, mm -hmm. they'll find that video vault there and they can pull up the Pete Mazzetti show right. and watch any episode going back probably a couple of years worth of Peter Mazzetti episodes. Absolutely. Um, and and uh, see the, some of the great work that you've done over the years. Absolutely. 
So that's a kind of a nutshell of the activities. It's a very active place. Um, you know, just an example, I think uh, I'm the fourth taping here in the studio today. Um, the ladies are very busy and I know we're on target right now to produce nearly 500 shows um, this year, wow. both in the field and in the studio combined. So that's a lot of work. That's a busy operation. Oh, absolutely. When you consider that most of it is made up by two hardworking young ladies and then a, a group of volunteers that are helping out as well too. So, and folks like yourself that are producing content and that's mm -hmm. important that producing this local content is you are the backbone or the heartbeat to our operation. Without the Pete Mazzetti's and all the other producers, you know, we would have no content. So Excellent. that's why we find your show and so all the others so valuable to, to what we do. Well, thank you for hosting Pete Mazzetti yeah. for all these years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I guess this would be a good point um, to talk about one of the unique things that's taking place this summer, and that is uh, we are hosting a summer camp, um, a really summer this. camp, um, very un uh, unique situation. Um, it's open to young adults. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when I say young adults, high school seniors and college and any young adults along the way. Um, we're very fortunate that we've got some um, two wonderful, very, very, um, uh, I should say gifted um, folks um, from this group called Flip the Lens yeah. that are going to host this four-week camp along with um, both Emily and Anne Marie. Um, so we have a number of students coming in uh, right after the 4th of July for four weeks. They'll meet three days a week. Um, they'll be producing a variety of different um, programs. But what's unique about this is that Today's young people have a tendency to turn the camera on themselves, right. all about the selfies, and, and you see them on TikTok and all the unu unusual things. But this, this program is to teach the students more about being aware of their surroundings mm -hmm. and the cultural differences of people and developing some empathy for, for, um, for the people and um, an appreciation for um, the fact that I believe everyone has a story. Um, so they're going to go out and do a mini documentary plus a, um, uh, a short video about the people um, that, that they think that would have a unique story uh, to tell. Um, so it, we've got some video and I know they're going to run it in yep. a little bit, but let me tell you a little bit about it. Sure. So one of the unique things is that um, the takeaways from this is the, or the objectives that the students will be learning that we're really proud of is that it's going to teach these young people a lot about storytelling. Right. You know, everyone can pick up a camera. And I've seen a lot of my students, I've been in this field for 35 years, there's a lot of people who have strong technical skills. But one of the most valuable and important skills is the ability to tell a story. And that's one of the gifts that these people are going to take away from this, one of the outcomes and objectives that we're hoping that young people will take from this. It's, we don't want the technology to, take, to rule the, the whole course, but what no. we want to do them to understand is the idea of being able to tell a good story, right. um, a digital story. So it comes back to the importance of you know, being a pretty decent writer and understanding how to take your, your concept and develop it into a, a story where you're uh, eliciting some kind of emotional, uh, emotional response from your viewers. And that's one of the wonderful things that will happen on this. So they'll learn a little bit about interviewing techniques, okay. um, how to do a proper interview, um, the importance of developing strong open-ended questions, and on then listening to those responses that they get from those um, from these people that they're interviewing, so that they can have a good follow-up question and show that they're truly listening to the interview, so that they have a great follow-up question. Too often, I remember one of my students. She's a wonderful, a very successful anchor woman out in San Francisco for an ABC affiliate right now. Wonderful ENG news storyteller, but she had a little bit of difficulty listening to what was being said. So she had problems listening to the kind of people that were. Um, when she was interviewing, um, she had never had the good follow-up questions because there was always a, a springboard <laughs> moment to get into those right. questions. Um, one of the things they're going to learn about is the production, the importance of production planning, um, how to plan for a, a good video production, um, and how to operate. Um, you know, professional video equipment is another takeaway from this that we hope they'll take away. But also, we're going to teach them how to edit. Editing is, is an important part of the whole production process, the whole post-production process. Um, is where the magic happens. Yeah. You know, you shoot a variety of raw footage, but where the magic really happens is in the editing. Right. Um, and then being able to shoot enough content so, to cover yourself so you have all the content to, um, to tell a, a really good visual story. Some of the soft skills that the folks will take away will be listening, 
um, communication as I was just talking about. And then the other big thing is for young people to learn how to collaborate with each other, teamwork. Right. Teamwork is a really important aspect because um, when they go out into the real world, um, collaboration teamwork is a big part of a, um, the working team in any company that you, they, they go to work for someday. And then the other soft skill that we hope they take away from is being curious. Absolutely. Just being curious and listening carefully and, and to your surroundings and having a, a great respect for, for those uh, there are others, for others around us that even though we may all be different, but you know, everybody everybody's ha has some, something very unique to offer. Um, I used to challenge my students every time is to find someone. There was this guy, I used to love him, Steve Hartman for CBS. He was kind of my mentor when, back in the early days when I was when I was developing my good storytelling right. skills so that I could teach them. I love the way this fellow told stories. He, he still works for CBS. I was going to say he still works. Yeah, he's CBS. still a very he's still a wonderful um, CBS reporter. But he goes out and do those does those wonderful human stories about people. And one of the ways he used to find who he was going to do the story on, he would go to a phone booth, paste the phone book on the wall, and throw a, a dart at it. And wherever that dart landed, he challenged himself. That was the person he sought out to do the story on. Really? So he didn't look for somebody that of a, somebody of prominence or somebody that was, you know, in a political arena. Right. He just chose the Joe, the Joe, everyday Joe that had, you know, and challenged himself to elicit a story from that person. And that's one of the takeaways that we hope that these um, filmmakers will take from this camp, wow. um, this process. So, and so that forces then the, the, the other soft skill that will be taken away here, which is critical thinking and then um, developing confidence so they can be good storytellers. So that's a little bit about the camp and what will, go, what will take place. Okay. And um, I don't know how much time they have. I think we have a video I here. I believe we have a video. Yeah, which is gonna show a little bit okay. about Meg Pear and all that she does. Right. Um, this is the organization and she's got a wonderful uh, platform um, okay. already a presence on YouTube. Um, a hunt, uh, many, many videos, um, dozens and dozens of videos. These are some of the people that all over the world she's made, she's um, unified this um, and reached out to all these storytellers from all over the world. So we're going to be contributing from our part of the, our corner of the world um, to what, to some of this unique thing that's um, unique storytelling that's going on. You know, the, the phone is a very powerful thing today, Peter, as you know, Absolutely. because it has the ability to record not only video, but audio. Mm -hmm. And audio is a big part of the story and, and letting them tell that story. So you're seeing, this is the video that she uses on her webpage right. um, to tell a little bit about um, the unique stuff that she's doing with these, um, these unique storytellers that are coming from all, all parts of the world. Um, so we're excited um, to work in collaboration with the uh, folks from uh, Flip the Lens. Um, Meg Pear and her husband Tom Laws um, will be hosting the camp this week, uh, next week, and uh, and that's a little bit about it. Um, Meg's a, prof a communications specialist initiative that focuses on what is good about people, yeah. about our cultures, and about how we interact with the landscapes around us. We feature short films made by people from all over the world in all walks of life who are not professional filmmakers. We believe that if you have a phone, you're a filmmaker. And the only requirement to share a film for Flip the Lens viewers is to be curious, to be empathetic, to be creative, and to want to make a difference. We focus on our unique differences and our shared humanity. And we would love to have you be part of our community. Flip the Lens features videos in four genres. The first genre is a series of short interviews on the subjects of belonging, creativity, and culture. To date, just some of these interviews have included a French uni student studying abroad, an Indian cartoonist, a Lebanese emerging journalist, a Boston artist, a 16-year-old from Karnataka, a U.S. arts educator, a student from Bhutan, a hairdresser, college freshman, a dancer and community activist, a seamstress, and a therapist. The second genre is many cultural documentaries that profile people who are engaged in bringing to life and preserving cultural traditions and practices. The 
third genre of videos that Flip the Lens features are on cultural landscapes. These are places that have been influenced by humankind. A cultural landscape can be shaped by a single person or the site of a massive event. It can encompass vast expanses or be a tiny plot. Cultural landscapes can be considered works of art, narratives of a people, and expressions of regional identity. The fourth genre of Flip the Lens offers are point of view video essays. A video essay is a short film that explores a specific topic, theme, person, or thesis. Flip the Lens video essays to date have looked at identity, belonging, connection, cultural traditions, COVID, and being human. The world is a very heavy place right now. There is a lot of anguish. It's no wonder that many of us just want to scream in frustration, fear, confusion, and sadness. Yet one of the beautiful things about our human spirit is our resilience, our ability to look trouble squarely in the eye and be the change we want to see in the world. There are many, many ways to make a difference. At Flip the Lens, we seek to change the world by seeing the good in it and paying that forward. Thank you for your interest in Flip the Lens. And if you'd like to learn more about how to contribute a video, check out the links below. And otherwise, you can support people who are trying to capture what's good about the world and share it with others here on Flip the Lens by becoming an active subscriber and commenting and sharing the videos that you check out. So thanks again, stay safe and be well. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in culture and our human condition, why not subscribe? You would make our day. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. Sitting here with Chuck Lewis, who's the executive director of Valley Shore Community Television. Chuck, welcome back. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. So, Chuck, we just watched a video about a workshop that you guys are going to be hosting here at Valley Shore. Can you maybe tell us a little bit about what we saw in the video? Yeah, so that was a nice overview of the whole Flip the Lens concept, um, which we, we, as we were talking about before we went into the video, is basically um, an opportunity for the cameras to they, you know, make a difference by making a video, as she said there, which was, you know, kind of pointed a uh, point. Um, the power of the camera and, you know, both audio and video can can do a lot of good in the world. Um, you know, we're, as she said, it's, there's a lot of heaviness going on in our world Absolutely. right now, and it's an opportunity to bring out um, the positivity that, that that's going on. We, you know, we have this wonderful technology, and it's I think by putting it to good use of learning about others that are making a difference and, and doing great things in our community. So we're excited at the end of that four week um, camp, there will be a, we're actually hosting a screening here. Um, I believe it's on August 3rd at four o'clock and uh, we welcome those viewers that are watching this that would come see the final work of the, the young filmmakers, the emerging filmmakers that are gonna be here at that workshop. And uh, we'll be doing a screening that night, um, showing the, the pieces that, that that group, the students in that group have developed along with having some free freshments. And uh, we're inviting both town um, and uh, people of prominence and we hope to have uh, the media here as well too to report on it because uh, 
it, this is the, the message, the takeaway here is so important. And, right. um, and we're, we're really proud to be part of the whole flip the lens uh, concept. And um, uh, this is a one of hopefully, hopefully many other um, uh, events like this that we hope to work with them. Uh, we, we see a, a great collaboration in marriage here. Um, working with the folks from Flip the Lens, and you know, the, the, we we support, and one of the reasons I got involved is because I love the end message. Right. I love what the message is all about, um, and it's kind of it's if you think about it, it's a, it's an important message that we need to get out there, and we have a wonderful facility, opportunity, and and the, and the equipment to help these uh, young filmmakers to do that. So we're excited about it, and uh, thanks for letting me talk about it. Yeah, no, show. Absolutely, appreciate it. Absolutely, yeah. not, absolutely. Yep. Now, how now? If people want more information on the TV studio and how to get involved, Dell, all the information that they need is you can go Real on the VSCTV. Yeah. Yep, yeah, VSCTV.com. We're easy to find and uh, find it all. Yeah, even if you forget the uh, the easy, I'll just type us in VSCTV, and it'll come right up. It's at the top of the search engine when you go use Google. And, absolutely, uh, we're happy to to see that. Um, so that's, that's an, in a nutshell, the great things that are going on here, and we're excited. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a very busy summer at it Valley is. Shore Community Television, a very it busy is. summer. So. And we've got a little bit more time left, so we've got yep. to, I want to actually thank you for, again for hosting Pete Mazzetti and yes. the Pete Mazzetti Show for all, all these years yep. because it, I've been with you guys since you guys first opened. And yeah, well, you were, you were with I was, Comcast before I, us I before, was. and before 2013. When we, actually, we're coming up on our one-year anniversary. Uh, this July will be one year of Viet I mean, 10 years. 10 years. I was going to say one year. No, one year. no. <laughs> I meant 10 years. It's our 10-year uh, anniversary That's right. uh, this July. So we're excited. To, uh, it's, it's been a wonderful 10 years. A lot of growth in those 10 years. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of growth. Um, absolutely. Yeah, so that's one, one of the many great things going on. But What else can I tell you, um, <clears throat> Well, okay. b before we before we we're, we're actually almost out of time. Okay. So I got to wrap it up because right. Emily's Emily's right. in my ear yelling, okay. telling me to wrap it Sounds up. Sounds good. Before, before we do, I want to thank you for coming down. Hopefully, we'll see you again soon. Okay. Very thanks, good. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you. For thanks, having bud. Me on. I appreciate it. You got it. We'll on behalf some. of Chuck Lewis, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks, good night. We'll see you next time.